guys welcome to your second Rails tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to install Aptana Studio and you can use any editor you want but this is the one that I have and if you want to follow along with with the tutorials and you can follow along with this editor I really like this one the only problem is that it does take up a little bit of memory so once you run it you, you end up take up um, I think like one gigabyte of memory so you you should have a pretty decent computer if you don't then i suggest you download sublime text too which is free uh, for evaluation purposes but you could you, you don't have to register so it'll be kind of free so if you want to install aptana studio you're going to go to aptana.com products studio download so actually just you're going to go to aptana studio and uh, click on the download link and in here you could download as either uh, an eclipse plugin or it's a standalone. The Eclipse plugin is is going to be a lot bigger because you're going to have Eclipse and itself the plugin. So I recommend you only use um, Aptana Studio standalone unless you're developing for Java. So once you download, just click here and just install the same thing. Okay, you always you know install every single other program. Click next. You're going to have a little icon here and. Um, the first time you're going to open it, it's going to ask you for your workspace. So the w the workspace that you choose is going to be, if you've been following along, it's going to be the the WAMP server, www. So if you browse, and depending on where you install WAMP, I install it in my E drive, but you probably you have to install it in your C drive. Um, go over to WAMP, and then www, and then that's where you're going to click OK. So it's going to look something like this, although yours is going to have a C here most likely. Once that's done, make sure you click on this, this little checkbox and click OK. I'm going to click um, Cancel because otherwise it's going to create it again. And what that's going to do is going to allow you to create files. Every time you're going to create a new project, it's going to create it under this folder. So it'll be your default. So if you, I'm going to assume that you don't have any experience with the Eclipse environment and um, because this is an Eclipse um, environment basically and I'm just going to show you a little bit around here so you understand what's going on so basically here you have all the little terminals it's like your CMD although in here it, it runs the commands of, of Unix so instead of doing something like um, let's see DR I have to do something like um, LS and it, it will list all the directories in there so that's pretty good so what I want to do is um, you're not gonna have it like this so you're gonna have it like this and um, I want to open the www folder because you're gonna run some commands in there so you're gonna want to have it by default the way you do it is you're gonna open here and this is gonna take a while for you to open up because it's gonna open the whole computer up and look for the www folder in my case it was computer e and then WAMP and then www so what you do is click on the folder and click on this little terminal icon so just click it and now you're gonna be in the folder itself so that's that's gonna come in handy later on so just close this um, also what you want to do is if you want to change your preferences here I'm actually gonna upload some some preferences that I have you, you could do it up um, if you want to or not so one of the things that I like to do is go to appearance, general appearance, and then change the font and the and the size font, so colors and fonts. And then you can have it like this. Go to basics, open the folder, go over to text font, and go to edit. And I chose actually text, the font is gonna be consolas, the font size regular, and my size 11, depending on what size your monitor is. Uh, you want to choose the, the appropriate size. Mine it's a little big, so I chose 11. So click OK. The other thing that I like to change is the keys. Basically, it are like shortcuts. And this is the this is the file that I'm gonna upload. And you could download if you want. So, for instance, if you type in new, by default, this here new is is um, binded to Control N, but you know, when you press Control N, you're gonna create a either a 
Ruby project, PHP project, so it might as well be better to just bind it to a new file, which is what I did. So what I did is I exported this, and you're, in your case, you're going to import it. So I'm going to put the file so you'll be able to import the commands if you want to. So another thing you want to change is the theme, if that's up to you. Here we have all the themes, so if you go here, change this color here. And you have some several ones to choose from. Actually, before I, I used to have the, the white ones. But recently I decided to change it to a black background, which is the ones I have here. And I actually chose um, Ruby MB, which is actually easier on the eyes. And I find it to be a little better to work with. And there's a lot of more things you could change here, but, you know, there's so many things. It's ridiculous. So that's pretty much it for this here. And let me see what else. Here you have the outline, which is gonna outline all the all the methods, all the functions, and all the stuff here. And let me see what else. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's pretty much it, basically. So here you have the console, which is gonna show you any of the things that um, that are happening. So if you run some commands, it's gonna show you here. Um, one thing that I want you to download also is go here to says commands and you have here something called bundles and bundles are basically like plugins so go here and install bundle and you're gonna have a couple of list of them you can install as many as you want but you're not gonna use a lot of them the ones I do recommend you to, to install are the the one for rspec, json, jquery and um, Hamo if you want, GitHub, YAML, I think YAML comes by default, and CoffeeScript. So just install those bundles, you're going to have to install them um, automatically, I mean individually. So once you install all of them, you should be good already. And that's all for all the things that you want to do with um, Aptana. And I'm going to show you more things while I do more videos on it. Another thing I want you to do actually before I end this video is I want you to install something called the Pry, the Gem Pry because if you run IRB here, which is something that I you want to do sometimes, and you do something like two. Okay, I already messed up. Look, what happens is if you press two plus two, it goes four. Okay, but sometimes you're gonna mess up. You know, like I did in the first one. So if I put two, and instead of plus I put equals. For some reason, I can't delete it, and if I press the backspace, it won't do anything, and if I press the delete key, it does this three sign, I don't know why. So, that's annoying, so what you want to do is, you want to type in rem, gem, install, pry, and it's going to install, like, uh, something related to, um, interactive Ruby, but this one's actually a little better, because it's got more things, so, let me see. Alright, so I'm going to press quit. So in here, just press um, gem install pry and just install it yourself. What the hell? Okay, now here we go. Gem install pry. And install it. I already have it installed. And instead of pressing IRB for Interactive Ruby, now you're going to press pry. And you're going to have the same thing as Interactive Ruby, but you're actually going to have a little more things like if I say... Um, five times do I uh, put and now I have the ability to to delete so if I mess up I could delete it with the backspace so if I say I and then just end then I have the same thing as if I would do in IRB but now I have it indented and I have color code so that's pretty much it that I wanted to show you and then just type in quit like the same thing in IRB to end the the little program and that's pretty much it just choose oh actually I forgot one thing what you want to do also is um hold on let me open up here you want to show line numbers because by default I don't think it has them so I think it's under let me see if I can find it real quick that sucks huh I think I have to open a file. <laughs> G 
Jesus Christ. Hold on. Let me just show you here. Okay, so open up a, a regular file and just right click here. You're not going to have the line numbers. That's the whole point. So once you have it here, um, click show line numbers here and just press this and press OK. And you're probably going to have to um, restart the whole thing. So just exit here. And once you open up a Tana again, you're going to have line numbers. And that's all there is to it. Um, there's more things, but, you know, I'm not going to go into detail um, until we, you know, do individual projects. So that's pretty much it for now. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.